I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Central America. I became an expat nearly 10 years ago, and being an expat is an adventure. It means a lot of different things in your life that you may not consider before you do it, and it can be a really amazing experience. And a lot of people, especially now, are beginning to consider becoming an expat, or at least a digital nomad, who may never have considered it before. The world is changing fast, and that's to be common in every generation. That's not really something super unique in this one, but there are a lot of pressures on people in this particular generation and a lot of capacity for moving abroad that didn't exist previously. And so there's whole new groups of people considering these moves that never have before. And if you are pondering the possibility of maybe becoming an expat yourself, or at least a digital nomad, which is not exactly the same thing, then you may have some questions as to what questions you should even be asking. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's have a brief discussion about what you should be thinking about when thinking about becoming an expat. We'll get to that right after the bump. As an expat, we have a tendency to imagine that the entire world of people who are looking at moving abroad and starting their expat journey are somehow doing so because of the same reasons that we did. But in reality, Lots of people decide to become expats for a lot of different reasons. Of course, we know about people who do so from a refugee status, where they're coming from a country that may be war-torn, lacking in jobs, uh, isn't safe for one reason or another, possibly has lost its uh, physical ground due to rising water levels. There's all kinds of reasons causing international migration today, and we refer to that as being an expat when you leave your home country with the intention of not returning, at least not returning as a resident. It doesn't mean you will never visit or anything of the sort. Expats are a type of immigrant where we're focused on that they are leaving one country and not necessarily permanently moving to a new one. When we talk about immigration, we're talking about the ingesting of new people into a country or region, uh, whereas expatting is more related to emigration than to immigration. But obviously, those things always have a lot of overlap. So when we're looking at becoming an expat, though, what that implies is that there's a reason that we're looking abroad, as opposed to, for example, I live in Nicaragua. I could give you lots of reasons why Nicaragua is fantastic, and you may be like, that's exactly what I want to do. I just want to live in Nicaragua. If that was your goal, right? Your entire idea about moving abroad was, I want to be in Nicaragua. We would think of you in the context of your immigration to Nicaragua. If you're thinking in terms of, I live in X place and I think that out in the world there are other opportunities for me. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know where I want to go or I'm open to going multiple places. Maybe I'll move around, but I'm not going to be here anymore. Then we think of you as your expat experience. So that's one of the reasons why we use those terms. And of course, they Again, you can almost always use them interchangeably, but it depends on your context as to which makes sense. In a lot of cases, like for us, being an expat is what makes sense. We decided to move abroad long before we chose the place that we would call our home base. And even though Nicaragua is our home base and this is our primary uh, place that we live and will continue to be so, it, we still like to travel. We're still digital nomads. We still do a lot of things in other places. The one thing that stays consistent is that we are expats. We no longer live in our home country, but that we are immigrants in the place that we are is rarely true. When we're here in Nicaragua, we are immigrants. When we're anywhere else, we are not. But we are expats all the time. So that is what defines us full time. So if you are looking at becoming an expat, you live in some place like Canada, Europe, United States, maybe Australia, New Zealand, and are watching my show. Of course, you could be watching from somewhere else, but English speakers tend to be those places. And those are the places that have really strong desires to expat these days. Plus, you know, Germany and a lot of other places are struggling with their culture changing, their, their, their economic situation changing. There's a lot of things that are varying around the world. So a lot of people are looking at moving abroad from a lot of different places. And there's so many reasons that you may be looking to move. So the very first step of becoming an expat, I think is stopping and taking a moment to really think about what your goals are. What are you trying to achieve by giving up your home country? And giving up does not mean that you could never go back. We're not implying that. But the idea of becoming an expat is that you don't intend to go home. So mentally, you may be giving it up. So why is it that you're doing that? Is it because you feel there's better economic opportunity for you by moving? Do you're, are you looking for an improved lifestyle? Is it simply that the weather where you are isn't to your liking and you think somewhere else will be better, which is often true? Uh, especially if you don't like it, then somewhere else probably is true. There's probably some place that you would like. Is it that you just don't like the food or you want your kids to have a different future than you have? Maybe like us, you want your kids to simply have a more multicultural upbringing and more opportunity to see the world from a worldview. My dog is drinking water right beside me. And 
Maybe you want a place that is safer or a place that you think is going to be safer in the future, some place that has a brighter future. Um, there's, there's maybe just a place that resonates more with you culturally or possibly your family has been immigrants for a number of generations and you're looking at returning to your roots or something close to them. There's so many reasons why you may be considered becoming an expat. But I think it's good to sit down and kind of make a list of what are you doing? Be intentional about becoming an expat. Of course, it's okay to simply move abroad and say, I just, I'm just not feeling it. I want to go and not really know why you're going. But if you know why you're going, then you have a much better opportunity to highlight in your own mind what problem you're going to solve and how you're going to solve it. Right? For example, if the reason that you're leaving your, your home country is that uh, it is an issue of safety, then going to a place that is demonstrably safer than the place you're coming from would be important. If that's something that's so important to you that you're leaving the country you're currently in, you certainly don't want to leap into a place that doesn't meet that goals. I was watching a channel of, uh, of course, those of us who work in this space or have channels in this space, we tend to watch a lot of channels about relocation. And I was watching one recently where the person had stated on their website exactly what they were looking for in another country, and then continued to go to several countries that did absolutely nothing to address what they were looking for, and in fact did exactly the opposite. They went from a country that moderately did actually meet their goals, not completely, but pretty close overall. Most of the world would have seen it as essentially meeting their goals, and instead went to places that were as far from it as possible before eventually winding up in the one place that anyone who had thought about where they needed to go would have told them would have been the logical place to go in the first place. So by being intentional, for example, in that case, they could have looked at what they wrote down for the world to see and said, are the places we're looking at going, going to in any way meet this need? Oh wait, two of the three places we're considering absolutely do not meet our requirements. We know they won't work for us and instead go directly to the one that was at least a possibility. I want to save them a lot of headache and it really shows just how important you it is having just good decision-making skills, right? You're going to waste so much of your own life doing things that you already have established will be failures, right? If you're really looking for a place with great steak and you go to a country that only is vegetarian, well, you're going to be sad at the end of the day if that was your goal, right? So think about these things. Not that any country is just vegetarian that I know of, but that sounds like a really cool place. Okay, so that first step, understanding what it is that's going to meet your goals. And maybe you have a lot of goals, or you may also have requirements. For us, there were also requirements, or at least soft requirements. We wanted to be relatively close to home. We wanted a language we could relatively learn and understand, not something that would be super hard. Uh, we wanted a place that had enough cultural affinity that we would feel like we could fit in, but enough different that we would feel like life was learning and exploring and growing, right? There was a blend of things we were looking for. And probably for you, it's not going to be a single item. Chances are it's going to be a lot of different items that come together that say this is the package that makes sense for me to want to be an expat. That's, that's the norm, right? So put together that list and then start thinking about places where you may want to go based on that list. And, and this is really just a, a starting point, right? I was talking to some friends of friends who I was guided to who are looking at becoming expats. And of course, like everyone who is looking into becoming an expat and hasn't done their research yet, they leapt directly to Costa Rica is the place that everybody thinks of when they haven't yet done their research. Um, and I, I highly suggest not jumping to any place immediately until you do research. Don't start with a, well, this place unless I come up with something else because all that does is encourage you to not do your research and default to a choice that was basically given to you by a salesperson, right? The default in anything is always going to be that way. Someone is going to make an effort in any space in your life to try to set your default decisions on things because it's a powerful way to make sales simply by giving you an option to be lazy. And when your brain says, oh, I have this really simple option, why do a bunch of research when I won't know the difference? So I'm just gonna opt with this. Well, that's exactly why. A lot of the things that would have very easily for example, with the example I gave, the people who should have done any research whatsoever looked at their one stated goal and said, wait, one place potentially meets our goals and the others potentially don't. Like they have no opportunity to meet our goals. Well, we should at least start with the one that has the potential to meet our goals because at least then we're learning something new rather than just finding out what we already knew and wasting our time. So doing that could be really important for you. And there's a lot of steps here, right? You need to think about where you want to go. You need to think about how will you get home? Where do you need to travel from that place? Is it a place that's going to give you residency, possibly citizenship? Are those things you actually want? Don't just knee-jerk reaction to these things. When I talk to people who are relocating, so much of the time, the discussions that we have involve 
saying. So why do you want this thing? And they don't know. They heard it somewhere, and so they're repeating it. And residency, citizenship, those are things that generally you don't want. You may need them for a specific purpose, but they're not really goals in and of themselves. A new passport in some circumstances can sort of approximate a goal, but it's an extreme circumstance. Less than, say, 5% of people could possibly actually have that as a an approximation of a goal for them. But uh, residency is never a goal. It can't be a goal. So if you ever find yourself tempted to say, well, residency is something I want, it implies you don't understand either what a goal is or what residency is, because there's no possibility of residency being a goal or approximating one. It is not in any case a proxy for a goal, whereas a passport can never actually be a goal, but it makes a reasonable proxy for one in some exclusive circumstances. So that can't be the way that you think, and that is a dangerous thing. And when I see people who are heading down a path of bad expatting, that's generally what I'm seeing happening, that they have no idea what their actual end goals are, and so they don't know how to evaluate what they're doing. And so you end up with people who say, well, I once heard about such and such a country or such and such a place or such and such a style of working, and they kind of think of expatting as everyone does this one thing or I'm just going to do this default, and they don't really think about it in the terms of taking the entire earth and saying, I'm going to intentionally pick the place that's right for me and my family today in the future. And it doesn't have to be a single place. Could be this is where it's good for us now. We're going to move on in the future. That's fine, right? And and looking at does it give me what I want? Does it let me do the things that I want? Or, you know, it may be a great country, but it doesn't let you in. What are your options for getting in? Do you have the resources to do the things that you need to do? How will you earn a living? Have you thought about the greater scope of income, right? A lot of people come down and assume they're going to get a job in the country that they're moving to, but that's not the norm. There are definitely places that let you do that. There's definitely times that that makes sense, but it's not not the majority, no matter where you're moving in the world, it is unlikely that you're going to want to move and take a job in that new country. When we're looking at Europe, that tends to be the one spot where that's a common occurrence, that Europe is super expensive and often looking for workers. The same thing if you're moving to the US or Canada, very expensive places that are often looking for workers and you're generally able to make those places function because you're able to take a high paying job in a high cost location and live more or less okay because you're putting those things together. That works because they're expensive places that need workers. Most of the world isn't so expensive and most of the world doesn't need workers. They don't need extra workers. And so that seems like a really obvious thing when you're first becoming an immigrant that you're, you're like, well, I know immigrants who come to these places and they're looking for jobs and they get jobs and that's their driving factor. If I go elsewhere, it must work for me too, right? And, and we miss that those are people generally, and by generally, I mean 99.9999% of the time, people coming from very low income countries, people moving to very high income countries, people moving from places that don't have enough jobs, moving to places that don't have enough workers for the jobs that they have. And even with that incredible imbalance, the success rate of immigrants coming to those richer countries and making enough and being happy with their decision is way too low. While it's definitely works sometimes, it fails so much of the time. And then when most of my audience would be looking at that, they're saying coming from a place that has a need for workers and pays really well and moving to a place that doesn't pay well and doesn't need workers, we should be saying, oh, the factors have flipped. We need to change our thinking but we often say, well, it worked for immigrants to come to this country, so it must work the same way for me to go to this other country. And that is not at all how it works because we're looking at the end results rather than the process by which those end results were arrived at. That's always bad decision, right? memorizing someone else's decision and assuming it applies to you. And the example I give to this is my friend John is going to drive to Walmart and he gets directions from Google. It says, go to the end of your driveway, turn right, go to the end of the street, turn left, go five miles, and it's on your right. And then I take those same directions and leave from my house and I don't end up at a Walmart. I end up in the middle of a field somewhere. And I say, I don't understand. I follow the exact same directions that John takes every day and it works perfectly for him. Why doesn't it work for me? Because your factors are different. Your starting point is different. You're not going from and to the same place. Even if the to is the same, the from isn't. And so you can't follow the same directions. So it's really clear when we say that, well, okay, obviously your Google driving directions have to take into account your situation. And whether you're driving or walking or taking a train, all those things have to be accounted for. Obviously. Same thing when you're talking about 
Where do you work? How do you make your income? Where are you going to live? All these things, they depend on where you're coming from, where you're going to, and everything in the middle. You can't just copy other people's processes. It doesn't make sense because you're not living their lives. You're living your own. One of the most important things that I tell people who are looking at becoming expats is that you need to just get the process going. And that doesn't mean hopping on a plane and leaving. In some cases, it does mean that, but not the majority. In most cases, you simply need to start doing research, start planning, start thinking. And maybe putting things into motion. For my family, and I just did this in another video, it took us about five years to be able to do a ton of research on where we might want to go, maneuver our jobs, get everything lined up, get our kids ready to go, pack up, get a storage unit, move everything into storage, uh, unload our homes, and be ready to get out and, and be adventurous and go out and be expats. You could do it way faster, and we should have probably, but we ha we did have a lot of really strong factors that kind of held us back, and we weren't completely ready at the beginning. And so I, I get why it may be something you're just not ready to do, and you got to do what's right for you. Everyone's situation is unique, but we could have moved a lot faster, and knowing earlier on that it was something we wanted to do would have made it a lot easier. So we started doing a lot of research in 2011, uh, we did a ton of scouting in 2012, and that's an important piece as well, is that if you have any capacity to do this whatsoever, too many people go out and expat blindly. They tend to leap from, I never want to leave my home, I never want to go out and do anything, and this may be just because you know, you know your, your job doesn't make it easy, you don't have a lot of spare time, you don't have vacation time to do it, you, just, you, don't, have an inkling, you don't have an interest in travel or whatever, and being an expat in travel are different things. A lot of people overlap on that, but a lot of people don't as well. And maybe those are just not things that interest you, and you say, well, I don't want to do those things, but this this idea of being an expat and maybe having a lower cost of living or, or a healthier lifestyle. Maybe those things really resonate with you and you're very attracted to the idea and that's something that you really want to do. Fantastic. That's great. But there's a tendency, a way too large tendency to have that desire and leap from I've not visited, I've not traveled, I just don't have any experience to and I've packed up and I'm moving. And that while it can work, and I applaud people who are so brave as to be willing to take that adventure in such a way, I highly recommend against it in all but the rarest of cases because it is so shocking the first time you end up in a new country or a new town. And there's so many factors you may not have considered that if you don't see it in person, you're very likely to make really big mistakes. And mistakes meaning where you end up unhappy, maybe lose a lot of money, and have to come up with another answer to your life, often in a situation where you're less than prepared to make the best decisions uh, with, with a good amount of planning and savings and so forth. So you want to do as much as you can ahead of time to get things right. And it doesn't mean that you're going to get it right, but hopefully you're going to fend off getting it wrong and get it almost right. right? It's a different kind of thing. You want to make sure that your decisions are at least close. For example, maybe you come to uh, Costa Rica and then you decide that, well, Panama is a better blend for you. It's not that far away. Yes, you can move on from Costa Rica to Panama. Yes, you learned some along the way. Yes, you wasted some time, probably some money. But at the end of the day, it wasn't that bad. And Costa Rica wasn't bad. It just didn't end up being the exact right place for you. I had a similar experience. I lived in Panama for a while and ended up moving to Nicaragua, and this ended up being the right blend of things. I still loved my time in Panama. Panama was fantastic, right? I could have been in Costa Rica. I would have enjoyed that too. I just ended up skipping that and coming straight here and falling in love with Nicaragua. Nicaragua was just, we could tell it was the right spot. Panama, we could tell, was great, but not quite the right spot for us. But if I had to live in Panama, I'd be happy. It's a really nice place. I really did enjoy my time there. My family really enjoyed their time there. So you want to narrow things down as much as you can, because there's a lot of places that we may have thought in the past that we would have enjoyed. There was a time when I thought Canada might be a good option. Now I know that I would have been extremely sorry had I made that decision 10, 20 years ago. Of course, I may have been okay for a little while, but now I would be very much paying the price for bad decision making back then, because it doesn't meet any of our goals. It's not as safe as we want. It's not as cost effective as we want. It's not as easy to live in as we want. It doesn't have the culture that we want. People are unhappy. It's just not a happy place anymore, right? Those are things we want to avoid, and those are things we could avoid and did because we did our research. So that's once you know exactly what it is you're looking for, start looking into all the things that you can, right? I know there's a lot of questions that are difficult to ask. And in many cases, the answer is just, you know, other people do live there. Are you able to make a living, right? Do you have some kind of job option? Can you work remotely? Um, what are your tax situations? And so some things that you do need to know, right? There are some things you, you may want to consider. And I'm sure there's a lot of factors. And definitely get down there in those comments. One, ask questions that you've got. Two, if you've got important factors that people need to consider that I haven't mentioned, that's where you put them because we can add that to the show later and people can scroll down and read them as well. Okay, so things to think about.
do you need to travel places? What are the airport situation? What's the time to get places? What are the cost of flights? What are, what are the availability of airlines? Things like that. Maybe you don't need airlines, maybe trains, cars, whatever. What's your transport situation? As an expat, there's a really good likelihood that you're going to need to travel some, maybe it's back to your home country, maybe to other countries. Do you want some flexibility? Two, cost of living. Is it going to be better or worse? How's it going to affect you? Three, taxes, both from the country you're coming from and the country you're going to. Here in Nicaragua, we famously have one of the best tax situations around that if you're making your money from abroad, you don't pay taxes here in Nicaragua. And as an American coming from the U.S., money I earn in the U.S. is not taxed when I live abroad up to a certain amount, which is pretty, pretty reasonable. And so I have a really good tax situation compared to a lot of people. But if I earned significantly more, my taxes would be pretty negative and the Canadians would have a better time. So depending on how much you make, different countries have different reactions to that, different tax regimes. So that's something to be aware of. How is your home country going to tax you? How's your new country going to tax you? When you're in that new country, are you able to just go and stay? Do you need a digital nomad visa? Do you need a working visa? Even if you're working remotely, do you need a residencia? Do you possibly need a passport? Do, are you able to move towards it? What, what is your country's passport and visa association with that country. Um, is there any specific things you have to worry about? One really important tip, do not even look. Don't even think of going to the U.S. State Department website or any other government website like that. Those sites universally are used to guide citizens where the government wants you to spend your money and have no useful information for you. I don't care what you read on there, it's not useful. Right? You can't trust any – anytime you have a source that you can't trust, and those sites absolutely cannot be trusted. The U.S. State Department is the worst. Most of the information is backwards. They will call places that are safe dangerous, dangerous places safe. They will guide you into extreme danger to try to funnel your money to U.S. allies. So be super cautious of reading that website. They are not your friends, and they do not answer to you, and they are under no obligation to be honest. That was a very important propaganda law. So the U.S. State Department website operates under a propaganda a regime. They're allowed to say anything they want as long as its purpose is to guide you to the benefit of the government. Not your benefit, the government's benefit. So that and what's to the government's benefit is really never to yours. So be very cautious of those things. Those are trickster resources. They are not out for your benefit. Okay, but do your research. Look up where's safe. Look up where is uh, friendly. Look up where has the food that you want to eat, the weather that you want to have. Consider weather carefully. Consider access to Whatever it is that you may want access to, do you need access to beaches, mountains, lakes, oceans, uh, amusement parks, loads of restaurants, um, video game arcades, movie theaters, you name the things that are important for you, start listing those. And then ask yourself, are these things that you just want or are they really important, right? And then make sure the places you're looking at going are going to have those or not. Do you need to use public transportation or do you want to drive yourself? Do you need to own a car? Which sounds crazy, but to a lot of people, especially from North America, we're brought up so much owning vehicles that we sometimes really heavily prioritize the ownership of vehicles. No, I'm just not comfortable if I don't own my vehicle. That's okay, but that's a factor you need to consider. Is that something you're going to be able to do? A lot of these things here in Nicaragua, they work out great for us. We're allowed to own vehicles. We can own property. That's another thing. Do you have to rent? Can you buy? Do you want to buy? What's the real estate market like? Is it safe to buy? Is it easy to buy? Uh, do you pay a super amount of taxes? Are there limitations on foreigners? These are all things you need to think about if you're going to be moving to a country. Now, if you're only planning to rent, most things you don't have to worry about. But if if you want to be there long term and that leads you to wanting to own as well, which it does not necessarily, then you need to be aware of that. Is the country um, on a good path towards getting better and better or is it getting worse? Uh, countries have ebbs and flows and just because a place is getting worse doesn't mean you should rule it out. Maybe you shouldn't even consider it to be that bad of a thing. A lot of times as an expat, a country that's not doing well can be very beneficial for you. You can take advantage of lower cost of living or whatever that happens or just the shakeup. You're in a position to weather the storms really well, so it could be an opportunity. Uh, for you as well. How is the currency going to work? Really importantly, how is the banking going to work? A lot of people ask me this. Here in Nicaragua, again, everything is so simple. Our, we can just go to an ATM and pull money from the U.S. We work with dual, dual currencies. We use U.S. currency or Nicaraguan currency. We can just do anything, anytime. We don't, have to, we don't have any limitations on that. It's so easy. But if you're working in or living in Bolivia or Argentina as examples, those are places that uh, don't use U.S. currency and, or any European, North American currency, they have their own currencies. They have very heavy restrictions on bringing money in from the outside. Not that you can't, but those are things you have to make sure you have a mechanism for. You can have a million dollars in the bank, and if you can't get it into the country you're in, you're going to be living like a pauper. Now, sure, your money's still safe in a U.S. bank, presumably, Canadian bank, Western European bank, whatever. 
But if you can't spend it, what's the point of the money? Right? You may be like, I'm starving. I can't get enough money to buy food. I can't pay my rent because I don't have a way to get money out of the ATM. So those are things that you just have to think about. Is it going to be a country that's very easy to deal with or very hard? And a lot of times you can answer huge swaths of these questions all in one go by visiting a country for a few weeks, maybe a month or two, putting in some time, going around traveling, renting an apartment if at all possible, Airbnbs if you can't, checking out every little thing. Be aware of simple little things like in Bolivia, the power is still on the uh, 110 system like we are in North America, but they're on a 50 hertz cycle, not a 60 hertz cycle. Is that a big deal? No, but some things like razors could have problems. And importantly, your cameras might flicker when you're taking video if you don't know to change the setting. That can just really throw you off because most things you're like, I don't even notice that there's a difference. And then you're like, why are my videos all flickery? Huh? Must be something wrong with my camera. No, it's a setting, just a setting you have to know when you're in those regions. A lot of simple things like that. Will you be able to buy products? What is shopping like? What is a grocery store like? Some of these are very, very difficult to answer from abroad. On this channel, we try to answer as much of these that we can in as many regions as we can. Primarily, we're here in Nicaragua. We hit Costa Rica, Honduras. We hit a few different places, Bolivia. Um, and I'm hoping to hit a lot more, but there's a limited amount that we can show you. Now, here, because I live in Nicaragua, people ask a lot of questions. I show a lot of things. We're able to cover a lot of bases because I'm here all the time. But even here, there's a lot of things that will still potentially throw you off. And going to the grocery store and going, oh, this is what it feels like. This is what checking out feels like. This is what the aisles feel like. You can watch them in my videos, but actually doing it sometimes gives you a little bit more realistic feel. And, and sure, you can watch the videos and say, okay, I know I can handle this. But then actually doing it, the question is, do I want to handle it every day? Right? There's just all these little questions that you need to be thinking about. So there's all those things. And then there's... Um, uh, things like, is there a stormy season? Is there uh, uh, political travel issues with countries around? How am I going to be able to go over the borders? What am I going to do for how long can I stay? What are the limitations on me staying? All those kinds of things. Um, there's a surprising number of questions that you could be asking, but in most cases, it's so difficult to get good answers that you really do want to put in some time on your own going to a country and just exploring and discovering it for yourself. All those things you can answer on the ground definitively, whereas if you go online, there's a lot of misinformation. Like it's common to say that in, in Nicaragua, you can't own a car. Well, semantically, that's correct. You cannot own a car under certain types of uh, uh, tourist visas, but you're under a tourist visa. Why would you want to own a car, right? And generally, you don't. Well, what if you're under a tourist visa and you do want to own a car? Well, then just form a company and you can own a car. Oh, is there any limitation on that? No, just form a company anytime. You can form it before you come here. Oh, so I can own a car? Yes, you can have a car that is owned by you because you own the company that owns the car, the transitive property of ownership. But if you want to say, can you put a car in your name? Oh, no, it's in the company's name that's in your name. Ah, a semantic trick. So someone who wants to convince you you can't have a car will say one thing, and someone who wants to convince you you can have a car will say another. The reality is it's very easy to come here and own a car that you can drive. But is it in your name? No. So you have to be careful what you're asking. And this goes back to goal level thinking. Make sure you know what your goal is. I want to be in possession of a car that is mine that I can use to go where I want to go. Oh yeah, no problem. I want to, and I want that to be in my name. Is that really your goal? If so, no. But if that's not really your goal, then you're all good, right? And people often state that because that's not really their goal, but it's an easy thing to say. Right? That's often why goals are misstated, because an actual goal is sometimes hard to define and even harder to state, whereas something else is very easy. Oh, I need a Texas driver's license. Oh, well, that's hard because this isn't Texas. Oh, I need a North American driver's license. Oh, that's easy. You can just go get one down the street. Ah, okay. Right? Like, you just have to think about what your actual goal is. I want the right to drive. Oh, here's how we solve that. Right? So, uh, thinking through the things that matter to you um, as best that you can, and looking up as much as you can. The last thing that's super important for someone who's considering becoming an expat is that the world has become full, and it probably was before and I just wasn't aware of it, of people who prey on potential expats. This is a very common area, especially now, I think, because there's so many people who are panicking because they're seeing the economies in the North, uh, the global North going poorly. They're seeing that uh, governments are becoming very authoritarian. Um, there's a lot of things that people don't like about what's happening in the global North. And so suddenly, a lot of people are looking to the global South as a potential change of culture and politics that may save them from the things they're fearing in the global north. And whether that's true or not is, is 
immaterial. What actually matters is that people believe it, and because of it, it is driving people to investigate. But people are often investigating from regions where they traditionally haven't investigated, and so they don't know what questions to ask, which is exactly why this is coming up. And people have a tendency to worry about doing things on their own, and there's just a normal human conditioning, because everybody makes money this way, to push you to a salesman who's going to try to make some money off of whatever it is you need them to do for you. So of course the world has become full of relocation consultants and lawyers that will help you move and all these things, and they're generally out to prey on you. They only make their money if you do re relocate, and only if you relocate to a place that they have services, and only if you choose their services in those places. They have a lot of incentive to guide you in potentially harmful ways. So be super, super cautious about reaching out to relocation resources, hiring relocation resources, um, websites that are giving relocation advice, but also selling relocation services, because even if you're not paying them or not, they don't know that you're going to potentially pay them, they still have to give a unified message that guides you into paying for them so that the people who do potentially pay them don't see alternative information when they don't pay that looks better or whatever. Uh, so there's just this massive push and, and, you know, talk to like generic expats, talk to, um, near shore living, right? When you talk to resources like this, they say, you know, everywhere you turn, there's somebody and they're financially incentivized to sell you on this idea. And you got to be just so careful because they're going to sell you on the idea. You got to have residency and oh, you got to have a lawyer to do it. And you got to do it in this way. And you got to do it before you get there. Why is there this sense of urgency? Oh, that's part of a con, right? Standard con, create a false sense of urgency, create false needs, false fear. Right? Oh, you're not going to be able to live without residency. You got to get it before you go. You got to do it through me. Once you're there, it's too late. None of that's true in most cases, right? Do your research, talk to people on the ground. But we see it here in Nicaragua. There's constantly this false sense of urgency to get people to reach out to fake lawyers or not very honest lawyers who are going to do a lot, charge a lot of money for something that if you were here on the ground, you'd realize often you don't need, doesn't work the way that you think. Uh, you might need completely different information. It's a different time frame. It's super cheap. You could have done it on your own. It's free, whatever. Like it's all these things that you learn once you're here. And Nicaragua is an extreme that you just come and you explore and you learn as you go. Not every country is like that. Mexico tends to reward people who get their residency ahead of time. For example, Nicaragua punishes and wants you to come and get your residency once you're here. At least that's how the system works. So those are very divergent processes. You have to be aware of what makes sense in those countries. And so be careful because the people who are selling relocation services, they're salesmen and they're financially incentivized to mislead you maybe the thing that you need is the same thing that they sell. But if the question is, is the thing you sell what I need? A salesman's always going to say yes, right? So make sure you're not getting answers from someone who is financially incentivized to mislead you. And nearly everyone is. So be very, very cautious of those things. Always be eyes wide open with this because this is a major decision in your life. And while it's easily a good one and one that can give you a whole new lease on life and give you new opportunities and really change things for you, it's important to understand that it's also a time where a lot of people are going to seek to take advantage of you. And we see a lot of these things happen, right? We see a lot of people who are running. We just saw this today, relocation retreats. Like, what does that mean? It's an opportunity for salespeople that you know, you're watching a channel and you, you go, oh, I'm really interested in moving. Oh, Scott's talking about relocating. This sounds awesome. And, uh, but I'm, I'm afraid. I, I, I don't want to do this on my own. I need resources. And that, that's reasonable. But then you find people who are relocation assistants and they make their money by preying on people who are panicking but want to relocate or people who feel they need a plan B. They've already been given that feeling. And then they're really often salespeople and they need to find ways to get money from you. And then maybe they'll host a retreat or some kind of conference. They'll get you there. And what's in that conference? It's full of people who are selling you additional services, right? Maybe they're shipping products for you. Maybe they're lawyers and, uh, you know, going to get you uh, citizenship or, or residency and those kinds of things. And it's way too early to be meeting those people. It's way too early to be discussing things and you don't want to be meeting them in a, a whole bunch of salespeople coming after you as someone who is just starting to relocate. You need to get into a country, learn some things, meet some people, have some resources to protect yourself before you start letting all the salespeople in. In any other walk of life, you wouldn't jump right into having salespeople take over your entire mindset before you have any idea what you're doing. Same thing goes here. 
treat it the same. Sorry, I had to switch cameras. It started, uh, the camera died, the battery died, and then it's the next day and it's raining, but I had to finish up the video. So I don't want to make you worry about relocating. Relocating is very simple. It's something you can start doing. You don't have to get involved with relocation services. Once you have an apartment, so many countries are so safe and easy to move to, uh, whether it's just temporary and maybe you're, you're going to test the waters and see before you're going to make a big move. Maybe you need to do some travel. There's a lot of things you can do to dip your toe in. And I know that I had that video recently it's like don't tip your toe you got to jump in but you do need to do some research you got to figure out why you want to relocate you got to figure out what is going to work for you what isn't going to work for you make some lists figure out what regions of the world area uh, to start looking in narrow things down and then jump in right you do got to do research but then once it's time to you know so dip your toe into the overall research pool but once you know you're going to relocate figure out where you're going to start and give it a try but be cautious because you will be targeted. There are so many uh, channels where people are selling services. Um, you know, you watch it and then you're like, boy, I don't know. This person feels like a salesman. And then it hits you. Oh, I've got a, a I've got a friend I can I can you know advise them they they can help you get your get your residency. Oh, oh, I've got a conference you should come. Oh, I've got a tour you should do, right? There's always a thing that they're trying to sell you. Watch out for that stuff. Are they just trying to get you to want to do relocation because they've got a relocation service to sell you? A lot a lot of people who are talking about it are doing that. So just be cautious of where you're getting advice from. Make it for, make sure it's someone that you know is actually trying to advise you, not someone who is using that to get you into a position where they can try to sell you something more. But trust me, relocation for so many people ends up being such an incredible thing. If it's something you're considering, if you know you're the wrong person for it, chances are you would never consider it. It would never cross your mind. Say, well, why would I ever want to do that? If that's your feeling on it, then chances are you shouldn't. But if you say it and say, wow, I'm, I'm so interested in exploring the world. I'm so interested in seeing what's out there. I so want to learn more about myself, about a new place. I so want new opportunities or uh, just a chance to live on a beach and have things cost less, right? If those are your reactions, then chances are relocation is going to work for you. Yeah, it's always an exception. But by, by, in large, right? If you react one way, you probably shouldn't go any further. It probably doesn't make any sense for you. And if you react another way, it probably does. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. And uh, can you watch another video? That'd be pretty cool. Doesn't have to be one of mine, but one of mine would be even better than someone else's. But anything that you watch now helps the algorithm know that this video got you interested.